We get Mikar and Dab, the Sefer Pesach and Dab Pei Vav. We get on the bottom of Pei the base. We realize up at the bottom of the Yaman, if the Gemara continues to explain the halacha of our previous Mishnah, which was discussed in the laws of Karm Pesach, specifically Sulim, and that of Yaitse, when you go out of the perimeter, you're allowed to be. So our Mishnah will introduce a Namur teaching that will relate back to the halacha of our Mishnah regarding what's considered the perimeter of the Karm Pesach. I should discuss with the Kazakh and the Cheska to enter the Pachem Peshim and joining us in today's daf. This is discussing today's daf R, which can be the primary teaching of ex- that we're going to start off with, this is that of Rab, the Gagin Valley is the rooftops and the upper stories, in this couch, and they don't have the same sanctity as Yerushalayim and the Azar. Then we go on to the next Mishnah regarding eating the carbon Pesach in one location, they can eat in two different places. And finally, we end off with how a waiter should behave when serving a group that he does not belong to in that next Mishnah. And the parameters of the Isra to split up the eating of the carbon Pesach. Then other Interesting, uh, halach as they come up, our kala turns our face away from the others at the table, and the rules of proper meal etiquette. So the key term of the concept we discussed is the famous line from the Agoda, Imaftir Achar Pesach Avikaymen, which there's many different interpretations of what that means, and our doubt we'll see one of those interpretations. Hakol B'Ksabi Yad Hashem is a passage that says that everything, the structure of the base of English was precise the way Hashem had told David Amalek to make it. And the concept of Mesar Melukot and Mesar Melukot, usually when someone gives you an honor, you refuse him, but if he's only a minor person, but if he's a great person, then you don't refuse a great person. So we begin the current daf. Pehem a base three little up on the bottom of the yamid. The Mishnah had mentioned when he was talking about the Psul of Yetzay, okay, so what is considered inside, what's considered outside? Sachalayna is the windows, and the thickness of the walls on the top, they're going to have the halacha like what we said in the previous daf, kilifnim. It's like the inner part, you didn't go out yet and be able to sort of take me down. The Gemara introduced halacha that at the end, the Gemara is going to ask four questions on this next, next teaching, and then it's going to bring the halacha of a Mishnah in relation to this teaching. Amara, oh this is the following teaching. Gagin, regarding the rooftops, whether that of Yerushalayim, which has a sanctity of Yerushalayim, because Kachim Kalim, like the Karm Pesach, you're allowed to eat in Yerushalayim, but not further out. And whether it's about the rooftops of the Lashachis and the Azar, those are the chambers in the courtyard of the Beis Amigdash, which has the sanctity of the Azar, which is for the Kaddush of the Kachim Kachim, Chatos and Asham, those are to eat in the Azar. So the rooftop, the Valias in the upper story, is Loinis Kadosh, that doesn't have the sanctity, which means you cannot eat a Karim Pesach in Yerushalayim on the rooftop. It does not have, or on the upper story, it has to be on ground zero to have that sanctity of the Kachim Kalim in Yerushalayim and the Kachim Kachim in the Azar. Says, and this was the teaching of Rab. Says the Gemara, is that really so? But Vama Rab, the Shabbat Rab, Rab himself says in Rabbi the following two halachas. Kezesa Pischa, you could have large groups that they had counted on the Karman Pesach, so until on the Karman Pesach, each guy would only get literally one Kezai from the Karman Pesach. That's one thing he said. The Halelia, the Halelia, and the, uh, the, the sound of the, the reverberation of so many people singing Hau, Paka Igra. It was as if the rooftops were bursting. Because they would say how on the Karman Pesach, like the Mishnah teaches later on, of Tzalikim Adalim, the Karman Pesach Harishan on Yudal Nisan requires how on its eating. So those two things, the people would only get a gazai, so there were so many people, and there were so many people saying how that it literally like, shattered the, the rooftops. But one thing is, as the Gemara Zerk Tintam would pay Vav Manalim, my love, there isn't it saying, the Achli Be'igra, that, what does this mean, they would, the, the, the how would shatter the rooftops? They, that they ate on the rooftops, the Amri Be'igra, and they said the Hal on the rooftops. Obviously, you see that the roofs of Yerushalayim are sanctified, meaning this, that they said that the roofs like a shattered, because meaning there were so many people on the rooftops singing, so you see that they allowed to eat on the rooftops, but you said that the rooftops don't have the sanctity of Yerushalayim. That's the Gemara. No, the Achimah, we're talking about they ate on the ground, the Amri Be'igra, and they said the Hal on the rooftops, but you're right, on the rooftops, they wouldn't be able to eat the carbon Pesach, because it doesn't have the Kedush of Yerushalayim. That's question number one. Question number two. Ini, is that says the Gemara, that really so? But what's not, there's a Mishnah later on, on Kofi Tesma base, that says, Imaftirin, that when it comes time to remove yourself from the Suda, from the Seder night, that is, Achar Pesach, after you eat the Karm Pesach, which is the last thing that you eat, Allah Seibu, when you're satiated, because that's actually the obligation of all Karban, so the Gemara tells us that if the Karban says, Lamashcha, which means for like Kedula, like kings eat, which they eat, they become they're satiated, so that's what's saying that you cannot remove yourself after eating Karman Pesach, Afi Kaiman. What does that mean? Now, Vama Rab, Rab himself, who we're discussing, he translates the word Afi Kaiman as interesting. It's, it's two words, Afiku Mana. 
which means say, take out the vessels from here, and let's go, let's eat in another Chabur. That means to say that no, meaning, you now go ahead and go from one group to another group to eat your carbon Pesach. <clears throat> so, you, so how could you say that they ate the carbon Pesach on ground zero, then they went to say, Hala in the middle of the Seder, on the roofs, they didn't rob himself, say, you now go from one group to another group. So you want to it's not difficult. Khan, when do we say in the middle of eating? You can't go from one group to another one. Khan over here, that previous teaching of Rav, is Bishas It's not when you're eating. The Kriya Bahal is after the eating. So then you could remove yourself from where you were eating on ground zero and go up to the roof to see how so it's not a difficulty that interpretation we previously said. So I said, okay, Tosh, let's bring another Raya, not like Rav, that he says the rooftops are not sanctified from this bright sound. So let me says. <coughs> Ali is based Kacha Kodesh. The upper story of the holiest of holies, cham, meaning in the in the Kodesh Kodesh, Chamur me based Kacha Kodesh. It's more sanctified than the actual ground of where the Aron is of the Kacha Kodesh. Why? She based Kacha Kodesh because the interior of the Kacha Kodesh, Kohen Gadol Nechtas LePamachas Bershana. At least once a year, you're right. No one was ever allowed to go into the holiest holies, but once a year, the Kohen Gadol Yom Kippur for the Gitaris and to spray between the staves of the Aron. He did go in. He had valleys because the country, but the upper story of the country, country, and it's not a lot of the world. You only go in once every seven years and once a shemitah. Remember, let's say Pamai, but some say twice in the shemitah. Probably some say, no, actually, Pamai's in the Yevil once in the Yevil, which is once every 50 years. Now, why would they ever go up to the upper story? The way anyone knows the structure of the basic Migdash, there wasn't, there was this upper structure, like it says in, in, in the Septus Midas, it talks about that. There was an upper structure, but no one ever went there. Why would they ever go there even once in the year? Well, it's laid the Mahit to see what it needs, because you got to do, check out the, the structure to see if it needs to be fixed or something because of the elements. But one thing is, you see that not only that is it sanctified, here we're saying in this Bryson that's even more sanctified than the Kachar Kaddashim. But we see that upper stories are sanctified. You said that the rooftops and upper stories are not, it's only ground zeros that have the sanctity. Now, Rabbi Yisabi says, no, mehechel neikum neisav inish. You can ask a question on Rav's teaching from the upper story on the hechel, the sanctuary of the base of Middash itself. No, shani hechel, the hechel is different than Yerushalayim and Afam Dazar. Because the Chesimda Pasa says in Dibri Yom Alam, it says the Yitin Dabal Shlema, but the Dabal gave to his son Shlema, is Tavnis Ulam, this deformed, the structure of the antechamber, Vesbatav and its uh, rooms, and Vagadzachav and its storage rooms, Valiyosav and its upper stories. You see the upper stories are mentioned specifically, but the Dabal and the inner rooms, Ubeisa Kapiris, and the place over the Kapiris is Uksim, which is the 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 Kachakachim. But soon it says over there, Hakol Bachsav, everything was written, Miyad Hashem from the hand of Hashem, Allah Hiskel, he gave me that intelligence to understand, but one thing we see is that we see that sanctified, because the Pasuk is saying it explicitly, conscious by the rest of the Azar and Yerushalayim, there the upper stories and the rooftops do not have the same. The Gemara continues to ask another question, Rav Tashmam, from Mishnah Mesechtas Maise Shemim. The Mishnah says, how l'shachis ha'ben is b'kodesh. There were many chambers around in the Azar. So if you have a chamber that was built in the sanctified area of the Azara, but of Sukhas Lachal, it opens up into a non consecrated area, meaning the only opening that the chamber has is not to the Azara. It only has, a, I mean, it's built in the Azara, but the opening opens up to the Harbai, to the Temple Mount. So then, says the Mishnah Tetrach, the interior of that chamber, although it's literally in the Azara, will have, a, will have the status as, um, like the rest of the Harbai is, and not like the Azara, because you go based on the opening. And the rooftop is holy. So you see that the roofs are holy. And here we're talking about the Azara. So Tirgum Rav Chizra, Chizra interpreted, he says, We're talking about where the roof is equal to the ground of the courtyard. Meaning that that chamber was built in a tunnel beneath the ground. So its roof is like the ground. So that's why its roof is sanctified. Because it's ground. Says, wait a second, if that's the case, safer, look at the safer of that Mishnah. It says, let's say the other way around. Let's say it was built actually on Harabites. But if Sukhan Lakaidish, but actually its opening, its doorway opens up into the Azar, then Tez and Kaidish, then the interior is actually going to be sanctified. And its roof is going to be non consecrated. Now, you that the you think the same say in Shabbat Lakar Azar, that its ground, that its roof is equal to ground zero of the Azar, then Havila Machilas. Then that means to say the interior is a machila, is a tunnel. Vamar Biechon says machila slain is kapshu, the tunnels are not sanctified. How could you say in the ratio, in the first case, that the roof is going to be holy? But that means that makes this that makes this status of this lishka into a tunnel. And Yabiran says tunnel is not sanctified. 
Says the Gemara, no, Kikom Rabbi Yechon, Rabbi Yechon, to say that tunnels are not sanctified. That's the Pesukas are biased, like like the case that we said that if it opens, it's like the case of the Seifa, where it opens up into the Temple Mount, which that's regarding when you have to send away a Balkari, who is sent out of the Harabayas. So the it says over there under some of Zion, Perigel Dvarim, that the Mechilas will learn this Kachur. The, the tunnel will not sanctify. Meaning, so there with the Balkari, you could send them out out of the Tumachnas through the tunnel. But meaning, he, meaning he has to be sent out of the tumach, but he could go in. He could be in the harabais if he's in the tunnel. But that's only because it opens up the harabais, like we said. So if it's open the harabais, so its status is that of bachut. Kitan he When did we say that the even as a tunnel, the interior will have a sanctity, and so to its roofs because it's equal to the ground. And the psuchas azar when it opens up into the azar, and actually it says Rashi, that's why it says psuchas the kaidish because you go based on the. Pesach, you go based on where it opens up into. But again, we have not rejected that interpretation that the mechilas will depend if it's holy or not. If it opens up into the uh, into the holy area, it will have a, a, a halach of holy end. And its roof could also be holy because we're talking about with the, its roof is obviously the ground because it's a tunnel. Then the Gemara continues to ask, but Vatani Linda Bryce and the Rebbe Yudahim, he says, clearly mechilas mitachas the tunnels beneath the sanctuary is chayil, and the, the Gemara assumes right now that means even though it's open up, it's opening into the Azar. And the Gemara says, no, Kitani, when we learn that price, is also Shabbosuch of the Chil. They're all saying the same idea that, no, they're opening up that, we're saying that these, the, I was under the Hechel. So as Rashi says, that these tunnels went beneath the area of the 11 Amas behind the Kadshah Kadashim until it opens up into the area of the Harabais, which is out of the Azar, because there's only an area of 11 Amas behind the Kadshah Kadashim that's part of the Azar. And then went over, but the opening was. In the Harabais, not in the Azar, and therefore it had a status of Chut. So Moses says, Tishma, I'll kind of try doing another ride, not like Rab. When they're following Bryce, it says, Begagoy, that the roof of the Hegel was Kaidish, was sanctified. Now, this is the Seifa of the Behudah's teaching. Here, like Rashi said, you cannot say, Oh, my Hegel, what are you asking from the Hegel? Because it doesn't say the roof in that Pasuk. I Meaning previously we had asked from the Hegel, we said, I the rooftops are are the, the, the upper story of the Kaidish Kajim is holier than the than the, the lower area, and you said it's not sanctified. So we said, no, that says in the Pasik. But the roof, you can't say I the Hegel is different than how you ask from the Hegel because it doesn't say the roof over there in that Pasik. The whole thing was it says in the Pasik, Miyad Hashem Alai Hiskel, that that's what the Torah is saying, so it has a sanctity, but it doesn't say that. So and you tell me roofs are not sanctified. So, so the Gemara answers with a question. What but Tisbra, you really think it's logical what you're asking? But but Katani, but the mission the, the Bryce there teaches that Gagi Halalu, these roofs in the courtyard and the chambers, ain't nice from Shum Kachik Kachim. It says that you cannot eat over there the Kachik Kachim that are supposed to be eaten as Zara. They ain't shaykh them Shum Kachim Kachim. You cannot slaughter Kachim Kalim, but that are that can be slaughtered anyway in the Zara. You cannot slaughter on the roofs. So so you see obviously that it is like Rav that the, that the roofs are not sanctified. So wait, then Veli Kasha Gagi Kaitish. So then how do we understand, how does the Bryce say that the roofs are holy? Didn't you tell me that the roofs are not like they? I mean, they, then the Bryce itself contradicts itself. So Rav Chaim of Aguri says, no. The, the truth is like Rav, obviously from the other part of the Bryce, uh, that the roofs are not going to be able to use as eating country country or slaughtering country of over there. Because obviously it's not sanctified. So I the rest of the other part of the Bryce is saying that it is sanctified. No, that sanctity of the roof is only Loisin based Amex. It's for a different utility. It's for that of these, uh, the, the kalim of hektish, which were needed for the construction, but not for those that are needed for the mezbeach, like we're talking about, as we find that these, what's called these two amas that we're talking about are actually sticks of measurements, which were put on the height of the gateway, which is the rooftop and the upper stories. So it's not like the mission of the second scale. Base amas, so it doesn't mean like when we say amma, I mean there was these measuring sticks of an amma. Haya b'shushin abira. It's very appropriate for Purim time, but it doesn't mean actually in Shushan Abira. It's actually a structure that was built on top of the gateway in the base of Migdash. Like the Mishnah teacher presented to me, this the Shah Mizrahi, the eastern gate of the Azar. On that, it had the the, Shush, uh, uh, the picture of Shushan Abira built over there. The Imam Nachs explained so that they should know from where it came. Now, for that purpose, were the roofs sanctified? That anything that's similar to these two Amas, these two sticks, which were not for the Mizbeach purposes, but for other things, you're right, they were not sanctified, which is like Rav, that you wouldn't be able to eat Kachim or Shef Kachim and all those things over there. So what are these two sticks that we're talking about? Achas Akerim Mizrachas Tavayim, this one was on the northeastern part of the, the, the roof. Achas Akerim Mizrachas Tavayim, this one was by the southeastern. Zush Akerim Mizrachas Tavayim, is this, that it's 
on the one that was on the northeastern, Paisiyasarishal Moshe was more than the, the Amma of Moshe Bain, which we always know Amma six Tachim. That one, that stick was more by a chatzi etzba, by half of a finger breadth. The one on the southeastern part, was even more than the other one, another half of, of a finger breadth. Then to see Sarah Shalom, Moshe Etzbo comes out that it was more than the one that Moshe Ben knew that of an Etzbo of a finger breadth. Now, why do we have these two sticks? Why do you need even any of these two sticks? One, a, a half an Etzbo, one a whole Etzbo. Why isn't it just enough with the measurement of Moshe Ben knew that an Amma six Tvachim? It says the Gemara, Shiyu Umnen. The purpose was that the craftsmen they were hired to build in the base of Migdash a certain amount of Amis, Neitlin Bikitan. They would take from Hekdish according to the smaller measurement that a Mesha made. From they would they would bring back to the structure, to the treasures of the base of Migdash, Bigdailo, with one of these bigger measurements. And the reason was is that they should they should go ahead and be Mavatar, they should be, be giving up something from their own to Hekdish, but not precise, Kadishla de Meilo, that they shouldn't come, they might benefit from Hekdish without uh, that was rightfully theirs, and they could come to misappropriation. So to create that margin, they made that they would take with the smaller one that a measurement, but then they would give back with the bigger one. So the says, okay, but, but Tarti, two bigger sticks, lumbly, what do you need? Why, why isn't that sufficient with one stick that's bigger than that a measure? And that would be the bigger one, why two? It says the Gemara, Achas the Kaspar that have one was for silver and gold. That one was only bigger than that a measure by a half a finger breadth. Where these craftsmen of gold and silver had these tablets and these tables that they would have would be this difficult profession, they would be in only a half a finger breadth more. But the achas, the other stick, there was a full finger breadth more than the Meisha Bein. Was was Lebanyana, was for building, let's say, with with bricks, where they would add on to the stipulation an, an ama, a finger breadth on every ama. That was because that we didn't obviously gold and silver. The the the, the, the ratio was much more expensive. So that we did only half a finger breadth, but by regular construction. That we did a full finger breath. <clears throat> now, the Gemara has one final point, which this is why we brought in this teaching about, because it relates back to the Lacha of our Mishnah. Tanah, we learned the Mishnah, Hachaloyne is the windows, and the thickness of the wall, on the top of the wall, is is like the interior, that of Yerushalayim itself. So therefore, it's not Psal of Yetziah, like we said in the Mishnah. But it says the Gemara Bishnah, we understand the windows. Mishkach is that we could explain, how, first of all, how do we understand? Didn't Rav say that the sanctity is only on ground zero? How can the windows and the top of the wall be have the Kedusha of Yerushalayim. Uh, so windows we understand, the Shabi Lekar Kazar, that you could have that the windows are on the bottom. The window is equal to the ground of the courtyard. The thickness of the wall, how are you going to have? Obviously the top of the wall has the sanctity, which is similar to rooftops and upper stories, which is not like Rav. No, Mishkaf is the bar shur. You could have this answer for Rav by a small wall, which is like bar shur. Shur means a wall, and bar is like the son of that, which was a supporting wall within the larger wall, which is small, and that was equal to the ground of the height of the Azara, because actually what would happen is that the Azara was on an incline, and it was going higher and higher, and so you could have that the wall and the wall that, that the wall behind it is. It basically, since the mountain's going up and there's a supporting wall behind it, that supporting wall is equal to the ground right behind that big wall. Where do we find this such a concept of a supporting wall? That's like the Pasuk and Eicha. The Yav al Chayl That there was the morning of the wall and the Chayl and the lower wall. Which, there's a wall and supporting wall. So, this halacha that the wall will have the halacha, like the inner area, I, it's a Goiva, it's a God, and we don't give sanctity. Oh, it's not as equal to the ground as it possible by this lower supporting wall. And since it's on the incline, that lower supporting wall already could be equal to the ground of the Azar. Now we get to the next Mishnah. Uh, Katiyah on this theme regarding the Psul of Yoytze, of the invalidation of going out of the perimeter, specifically that as a, a unique halach regarding Karban Pesach, not only that Karban Pesach cannot be taken out of Yishalayim, like all Kachim Kalim, but as a unique halach regarding the actual Chabura of where it's being eaten. Says the Mishnah, there were two groups that were eating one carbon pesach, the ba'is a one house. So what you could do is, they could turn their face one way and eat. And they could turn their face the other way and they could eat. In other words, as Rashi explains, they don't need to all eat together, one facing the other one, so that it should look like the one chabura. Rather, what they're allowed to do is they're allowed to turn their faces away. And they could be eating in separate areas, and even though it looks like two chambures, that doesn't bother us, as the Gemara is going to explain, because one carbon pesach is allowed to be eaten in two houses and two chambures. 
you maybe yourself cannot, but the Karm Pesach Asub could be split up into two halves of Chaburas, so even in one house they could turn their faces away and they could look like two Chaburas. Now, even more so, is Vahamechem, is that you could have the, um, the, 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 the water heater, that they would heat up water and they would use it to dilute the wine, they allowed to put it be'emza in the middle so that it should be easy for the shamash, for the tender, for the waiter to go and serve both of them, to pour for them from here and, and on either side. In other words, and they don't have to change their custom for the rest of the year, even though this mechem, this, 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 this hot water kettle is, is separated between the two chaburs. So it's like literally making like two big chaburs. Again, we don't care about that because this town holds that you'll to have one karam pesel be eaten like two different chaburs. Now, but however, kisha shemesh, kisha shemesh, when the when the waiter who's serving both groups, Oymid, when he gets up from one chabur where he started eating, he has to eat one of the chaburs. When he gets up from eating carbon pesach, so he stands up limzay to go ahead and pour for the other chabura. So then Kleifet says he has to close his mouth. Umar says and he has to turn his face towards his chabura, so they they should they should not suspect him as if he's eating with the other chabura, because this tana also holds that. Although the carbon pestle could be eaten in two chaburs, but one person cannot eat in two different places. So, as we'll explain the Gemara, that this Tana, that is Rabbi Yehuda, he explains, when it says in the Pasuk, the, 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 although the, the reading in the Pasuk is Ye'ochel, as we'll see by Rabbi Shimon, he learns the way it's written, which is that one person cannot eat in two different houses, which is he can only eat in one house. Now, two chaburs, however, they could turn their face away from each other, which is like two different houses, because as we'll see, there's a different passage that says, that however, there's bat in two places that you could eat one cup and Pesach. So that's the, that's the way this Tana explains it, so that one person, again, can have it in two places. So this waiter's got to be careful that it doesn't look like he's eating from the other chabur, because he'll be eating two places. But the fact that the, the two chaburs are totally separated, even with a mate in between them, that we don't care because one kambesa could be split up into two different places. Now, another interesting uh, type of halacha, uh, this is, again, Ashmegi, it's the chaburas. Again, he has to have his mouth closed and his face turned towards his chaburas. Like, back to his chaburas, but he continues eating his kambesa. Now, the hakala and the bride, where she's embarrassed, also about turning your face, although it's not really related to this uh, halacha of Karm Pesach, but we're saying that they can turn their face and eat separately. She's also, and it's related to the Karm Pesach, but it's coming from a different idea. He says, but now, she could, she's allowed to turn her face to another side, by Echelas, and she could eat the Karm Pesach like that, because the way Rashi learns it, which is an interesting interpretation, is that the Pesach can be eaten in Shtei Chaburas. So the Kala, almost so to speak, is like a separate Chabura, just like we said that the same Karm Pesach, you eat in two Chaburas, they can turn their face other ways, and we're, we're doing two different groups, we don't care because one person we eat in two different groups. The Kala, the bride, she could also turn her face and she'll be like a separate group. She's on her own clique, doing her own thing, and she could eat it that way also because we don't care. Pesach is Nechel, Bishtech Aburz. Now, everything that we said up until now, the Gemara says, Masnitin Mani. So, who's the Tanah of Mishnah that had these two halachas, which are actually the inverse of the other Tanah, that the common Pesach is eaten in two Chaburz, and also that one person cannot eat. A, a calm pesach at two different places. So it's Gemara Behudi, it's Rabbi Huda at the time that Luna Bryce said that the Machlik is Tanoi. The Pasi says in Shemais that they should take from the blood and they should put it onto two doorposts and on the lintel, on the Al Habatim. There's, there's a few, there's three DU come here in this Pasi. Al Habatim on the houses, on the homes, that's plural. Ashi Yoichlu, that they will eat, also plural. Aisai of it, which is singular, of the Karm Pesach, Bahem in those homes. Now, so it sounds like two people eating one common Pesach in two homes. Because it says, Yoichlu, they will eat, which is two people. Aisai is singular, is one common Pesach. And Batim is Shnaim, is two houses. So, 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 so what do you learn from this? Malam the teaches Yosha Pesach, Nechem Shnei Chaburuf. The common Pesach can be eaten in two different groups, <laughs> like our Mishnah said. Now, Yochel, Yehei Yochel, you would think that one person who is eating the Karm Pesach would be Eichel Mishtei Makayim as he could eat in two different places, like in two different rooms or two different Chaburs that turn their face away from each other because, yeah, you see the Karm Pesach could be eaten in two different places. No, Tam the Pesach teaches later on. It says, Bebais Echad Ye'ochel. In one house, should it be eaten? Which, this is going like a Yehuda who holds what's called Yesh'in Lemesites. We give primacy to how it's written. Which, therefore, he reads this, not Ye'ochel, but Ye'ochel. 
Meaning, if you don't have nekudas, you would read it yoichel. Sounds like one person has to eat it in one house and not in two different homes. But regarding many different people, oh, that says batim. That can be eaten in, in many homes. So mekanam, from here we see the other part of Allah about Mishnah, that Hashamish, the, the waiter who was roasting and he forgot. And he went and he put a kezayis of the Karm Pesach in his mouth, Sha'ach of kezayis, but Sadatana, that he ate a kezayis of the Karm Pesach on the side of the oven. I mean, he's in the middle of preparing. You know, they get shtickle flesh, you know, no one looks, you know, he's trimming it a little bit. And he, and he eats a kezayis on the side of the oven. And he was counted, he was part of the, the number that's supposed to be in this Karm Pesach. So now he's bad some stuff. Because again, you can only eat in one place. So, Ipekehu, if he's smart, Ramallah crazy man, that's already just get it all in already now because you're not eating anywhere else. If he gets up, he can't continue eating. So, just stuff your stomach from it. Now, but if the rest of the people in the Chaburu, they want to do a favor for him, Boeing, Beisham, and Tzidah, they come and they sit with him there at the side of the oven. Suddenly, we bring the tables there on the side of the oven and eat with him because he can't go ahead and eat anywhere else. So, if he wants to eat his whole carbon Pesach, He's got to eat it over there, or we'll join him, we'll have the whole Seder there next to him. That's the Rabbi Huda. So again, one thing you see from Rabbi Huda, he's the time of our Mishnah. He says these two halachas of our Mishnah, regarding how you interpret these two psukim, that one person has to eat at one house, in one place, but the Karm Pesach itself can be eaten by two different people in two different places. Now, Shimon Amin disagrees. He interprets the Pasuk the opposite. <laughs> The puzzle that says on their homes that they're going to eat in them, Malama just teaches shall eichel eichel That actually, no, the one who eats it could eat in two different places because he interprets vayeichel this yeichel not as two people or groups, but rather every single individual. It's a plural of individuals. So it's saying that yeah, Allah bought them in the two places. Asher yeichel that all the individuals will eat eisa in carbon puzzle by him and them, which sounds like that one person could be eating. In many different places, not like Rabbi Huda, the opposite. Now, now we continue to the base and Yochel Yehei. You would think now that the actual primary of the Karm Pesach itself, Necha B'shtecha Bruz, could be eaten in two different groups, meaning the opposite of Rabbi Huda. That you would think, okay, now the Karm Pesach could be split up and eaten in two different places. Not the Malim, but Vaisechad Yochel. The way you read the Pesach is not Yochel, but Yochel. In one house, it should be eaten. The Karm Pesach cannot be eaten in two different groups. So something about Mike Miller, what are they disagreeing about? They're saying opposite opinion. Says the Gemara that Rabbi Huda saw he holds yesh im lemesayrus, as we explained before, that he holds the primary is how something is written, and the way it's written is 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 yoichal. So he interprets this pasuk as no, one person could only eat in one place. So then, what's the other pasuk that's saying it in batim? Must be that yoichal is going on two people or two groups, which yeah, they could eat in two different places. That obviously comes that could be split up. Rabbi Shimon saw he holds no yesh im lemikra. The primary is how something is read. Which is, which, as, as we have the Messiah of the Nekudas, which has it read, it says, which is that going on the Karma Pesach, in one house it could be eaten, not on people. In other words, the primary of its eating should be in one group and should not be split into two different groups. It should be in one house. But people, if they want to, they can go from here and eat it over here. The Torah is not particular regarding only the primary of the essential of where the Karm Pesach is supposed to be eaten. Like it says, Yochel on the Pesach, and not on people. And then he interprets the other Pesach to say, Asher Yechel on the individuals, that yeah, they could eat on Batman, they could eat in two different places. And that's what Rashi is barbarening. I, you told me the Karm Pesach only in one place. That means that the, the primary serving is a one Kampura. It can't be in two different places. But one guy could continue eating in somewhere else. He'd go in another place. Now, the Gemara actually brings, interestingly, two nafkeminas between Rabbi Shimon and Rabbi Huda regarding their opinions of the Salacha. Let's say like this, let's say like Yishim. Let's say there was one Chabura, they were eating Karm Pesach, they were sitting, in the middle of the Suda, middle of the Seder night, someone puts a Mechitza between the, between the people that are eating the Karm Pesach. Now what happens is, they became like two Chaburas, because they put, they put Mechitza separating the Chabur. So it says the Gemara like this. The Dibri, I'm according to the one that says, meaning Rabbi Huda, that Pesach Necham Beshte Chabur is the common Pesach could be eaten in two different groups. So Neuchel, they could continue eating the, 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 the common Pesach, meaning they could finish up the eating. Because Rashi explains, even though that the one who holds Pesach could be eaten in two different groups, doesn't let one person eat in two different places, meaning Rabbi Huda, here, it, it, it doesn't become for every single Chabur like another place. Because you're not seeing any new airspace that you didn't see up until now. It's not a new place. I'm not in a new place. But, but we are in two different Chaburas. So the Dibri Lamas, according to Bishim, who holds, the Karm Pesach cannot be in two groups. They can't continue eating. 
because it's two groups. Not a new place for the individuals, but it's another group. So that's one nafkamin. And then, let's say the second one is the opposite. Let's say they were sitting, two groups, in two houses, and they were eating the Krav Pesa. But then in the Stalka, Mechitz B'nei, like they have in these... You know, those old, those young Israel, where they have these big walls, these movable walls, and there was two different rooms, and then they removed the mechitz between them. Now, it's new air space. So now every single chabur is like another place. It's like you're eating in the first place and the second place. So here comes out the opposite. When Divri, I'm according to the one that says, someone could eat in two different places, you continue eating. Although you're in a quote-unquote new place because the wall is removed, that's okay. But the Divrei according to Rabbi Hudu says, "Ain't no echel echel b'shem b'kavim." You can't eat in two different places, and nechem can't finish eating. You're in a new place. So that was the uh, the two nafkaminus between the two opinions of Rabbi Hudu b'shem. Now, but it says the Gemara Yosef Rav Kahn Rav Kahn was sitting and kapashli nifshin. He was saying these two nafkaminus that we just said before as obvious and 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 and, and explana- explainable. Like that, we said that making a mechitza would make it into two different chaburas. I Meaning, when you put a wall between, you put a mechitza between the, the one chabura, one big family was eating, and they put a mechitza between them, and suddenly those from this area or this area are separate. That that is if that makes it into two different chaburas, which is, is a chiddush to say that makes it into a separate chabura, and then also that removing of the wall makes like two different places, and then it wasn't even that. I thought like this is a new place. I'm not in a new place. I'm in the same place I was was. Suddenly I'm in a new place by removing the wall, and like I see something else. So Amalei Rav Asher Rav says, but Tiboy Lechiboy, you should have asked it as a question. Silek Mechitza Vasi, is Mechitza removing a wall and making a wall? Mi Ava Kabez Mechamez, or Kabez Chaburus Dami Eloi, is it like making it to two different places or two different Chaburus or not? Take it and let it stand. You're saying it like it's obvious. Like as if that's like making a new place for Chaburus. It says, I'm not so positive. And therefore, yeah, let it stand. It's not clear what the Allah would be in these cases, <laughs> if this would be an Afkin to treat the Buddha and Shema. Then we continued <coughs> with... Um, Interesting halacha that we said, we said that the kala, the bride, comes to the, um, to, the, to, the, to the in-laws, and she's eating over there, so she allowed, she allowed to also move her face away and continue eating with Rashi. She made it sound like, like as if she could be a separate chabur, but the Gemara just wonders, my time up. Why is she turning her face away? Why would that be normative that the Mishnah is saying, oh, the kala, it's not a problem, because if you don't hold it, it could be eating Mishnah chabur, the kala could be like her separate chabur, she, she could turn her face and eat herself. Why would she even do that? Because she's embarrassed to eat. Everyone's looking at the kala. Everyone's gazing. Oh, the kala. Oh, everyone's staring at her. It's embarrassing. It's very difficult to eat. Uh, when you become a celebrity, you know what that means. It's like you're eating. Everyone's watching, looking over at him. It's yes, Do me a tina toiva. Turn away. No, people keep on staring. She's not good. That's why she's turning her face. Actually, the Gemara brings a story that relates to this halacha. He went to the house of Nachman Yisrael. Amo Lady said to him, Mashinecha. What's your name? Um, he says, Rav Huna. My name is Rav Huna. Um, they said, Nisa Marapurya, sit down on this, you know, Mechubadiga couch over here, this uh, distinguished couch. So yes, he sat down. And as Rashi says, that uh, couch was a more distinguished, uh, noble thing, because the, the not so Hashavu would sit on, on benches. But Rav Huna went and he sat on the Shaina Benkel, the Shaina couch, and he did that. Yobalei Kasa, they give him a cup of wine, and come with Zimna, the first time, he took the cup, he didn't refuse. I'm like, please, please take it. Oh, that's a good moment. You offered it me, I'm, I'm going to take it. Vishasi betrays him, and he drank it in two gulps. And he stopped once in the middle of drinking it. And also, he didn't turn his face to the other side. He drank in front of him. Kicks, no, no problem. He, he drank it straight up. So they had, a, they had a problem with everything he was doing over here. So like, I don't understand. Amalei, they said to him, first of all, my time occurs, Allah, Rav Huna. We ask your name. You say, Rav Huna? That's how you, that's how you say it. You say, Huna? Um, he says, look, Bala He says, I'm, I'm a, I'm a, I'm, this is the, my name from when I was young. Everyone always called me Rav Huna. What do you want from me? This, this is my name, um, the, uh, uh, Rav Huna. So it's not like I'm, I'm like as if I'm glorifying myself. I'm a Rav Huna. This is uh, from kind kin. They always called me Rav Huna. So they say, okay, but my time at Yamalach, Nesim Apuri, why when we told you to sit on the couch? You saw after, why did you sit? And you didn't sit on the ground or on the bench. And the reason why they were asking these questions because they were wondering, this wasn't a custom in their place. Usually people had etiquette and they would like be uh, more uh, humble. Rabuna, <coughs> and he sits on the couch. Amalui says, look, whatever the, the host tells you to do, you do. So you told me to sit, I sat. Now some have the Gisais, which is the well-known aphorism, except believers. This is a Bryce and the Seth is their heritage. 
So that rhymes. Kamashim Kabbalah Bais Asai, Chutz Mitzai, tells you leave. That you don't listen. But everything else, the host tells you to do. You told me, told me to sit. I said. Okay, but my time, why is it when we gave you the cup of wine? The first time you, you received it, you said, no, no, it's okay, I don't really need. No, 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 we insist, we insist. How come you didn't, how come you didn't do that? Somebody says, look, the halach is misar from the cup. You can refuse to a, 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 a small person from, from, saying, from doing what he says until he presses you and pushes you. But they misar from the goggle. But you don't refuse to agree with also famous phrase. Because we find this by the Malachim that they said to Abraham Avinu, yeah, can't pass it. You told us, okay, we'll do. Whereas they didn't refuse Abraham, but by light, they said, no, Kibachayev Nolan, we're going to sleep in the street. Nah, nah, they were refusing him from being host of him until by Yitzhak he pressed him, please, please, I beg you. Okay, fine, we'll come. But Abraham Avinu, Amos Abba the Godless, he says, you guys are great people. I, I couldn't refuse when you offered me a cup of wine. He said, okay, but my time is Shtisa betrays him. Why did you drink the cup in two gulps? Although he says, the time when the bright side. Hashayse Chris Levasav has to be drinking a cup in one gulp. Or is it gargrin? So you're glutton. Was drinks the nine in one thing? That's 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 not a shnayim two times. It's that first. That's appropriate comment. Shleish should be drinking three gulp. Makase roch. It's considered arrogance. Hey, sip it slowly. No, two two gulps. That's appropriate. They probably drank it in two gulps. Okay, but my time Why didn't you turn your face away? You're drinking right. Everyone's looking at you, and you're just drinking like that. So Malui said to them, and this is why it relates back to the previous halacha from our Mishnah. Kala haifech is panevats now. The only thing within the mission was that the kala she'll turn her face around, but a man doesn't turn away. Oh, there's I think everyone's looking at him. He's gonna take a drink. The kala, the girl, if she's still turning her face away, so they're, they're right. They turn my face away. Remember, brings another story related to the, the previous halacha. Shmuel Reb Yisi, Ikla lebei Reb Shimon Reb Yisi ben Lakunya. He went to the household of Reb Shimon, the son of Reb Yisi ben Lakunya. The only kasa they gave him a cup to drink. A cup of chazim again on the first. Uh, offer he he took it and the shas mechatzim he drank it in one gulp. Somebody said to him, "Lisa Lamar, doesn't the master hold that shleish the crazy levasach is really gargin? We quote a brayse and says from Daf Heres, you drink a cup of one shot, it's a glutton. What's this? You drink in one shot?" Somebody said to them, "Loy Amri, they didn't say there's three variables over here that would change the whole thing because they didn't say the kaisach cotton, your small little cups, the enich matik and your sweet wine, the crazy the chava and my large stomach." He had a large, wide stomach. He says, it was a small cup, very sweet wine. And from a great to buy it. So for me, it doesn't apply. You're right, a regular person drinks a two cup. But this is like a tease. It's like, a, not even, you know. What's this, you know? So therefore, I drink it in one cup. Now, the Gemara concludes with some teachings of proper etiquette. I'm Rav Huna. He says, and this is nothing to do with the carbon pesa. The Nechabura, the people that are eating together, and you have a waiter that's serving them by the meal. So nechnasin b'shleisha. So when three people are are coming in, that's how they come in to eat the meal. Because when he is rashi, if let's say one of the two people came in to dine, then the waiter doesn't start serving them yet. When the three people came in, then they start serving them. And also the yitzin, whoever finishes his eating first, if he wants to leave, he can leave. Afil be'echad. Even though he's only one person, meaning even though it's going to be more difficult for the waiter to now start serving just the stragglers, the remaining people, it's okay. The guy can leave, and you know, even one person, and the waiter has to continue serving whoever's left. Now, however, I'm a rabbi, but he qualifies this teaching. He says, But this is only if that the last person should not be there longer than the meals of the rest. It means say that they come in, they, they, they're coming in the time that they normally come in. And also, let's say we the first halach of when they come in with three people, that they shouldn't come in too early, so that the waiter has to be there longer to serve the meal. It means say, it's got to be that, even though one guy could leave and the rest could remain there, but it can't be that these guys are coming too early or this guy's staying too late. It's got to be in the normal, and you guys hired me to be a waiter for, for this amount of time. It's got to be within that time frame. And moreover, the the dog is that you have to notify the waiter that this is their norm, that, that they don't all stay, this guy has to go to an appointment, this guy has a meeting, this guy, they go out one by one, because it is more difficult for the waiter to serve individual. Yeah, the guy, he brings a poop and platter, he brings the whole thing, but everyone, it's easier, but when you have a few people left, to say he wants this, he wants that, it's more difficult to serve, he has to know this, the waiter has to know this uh, beforehand, that this is their custom. Moreover, Omar Avina, he says, the nice and the later people who are, are, are the last people there, they have to pay the, the wages of, to the waiter. And the last guy left, he has to add on a tip 
to the to the to the to the to the, to the waiter because he's the last guy there. That's why no one wants to be the last one left over there. I think Mark concludes anyways. But let's like I said, all does not follow like this previous teaching. It, it doesn't apply the way they said uh, regarding the problem. Etiquette. It doesn't. It doesn't. It's not like this that the last guys have to pay and that the last guy has to give a larger tip. Hadnulach gets so much. I return to you the seventh parak in the Sefer's Pesachim. Parak gets so much. Spoke about primarily that of the halacha of roasting the carbon pesach and other problems with the uh, halachas of the carbon pesach. Something to discuss in today's daf. Pesachim daf peivav was we start off with the teaching of Rab that rooftops and the upper stories are not sanctified. Now, therefore, it's only that they said how on the rooftops, but they didn't actually eat on the rooftops. And I, I, you can't go to Pesach and Tuchabur, you can't go from the one place to another place. Oh, but that's only B'Shaz uh, Here is Shloi B'Shaz they finished eating, they went to the how on the rooftop, that's permitted. Now, in contrast, the upper story of the Heichel, Oh, that is sanctified because that the pasuk says Hakol B'Ksav Miyad Hashem Alai Hiskil. So that's different than the Azara and the and the and the uh, Yushalayim, which their upper stories and the roof was not sanctified. Now, if the roof is equal to the ground, then it's sanctified, and we have by the Machilos and also by the Bar Shura of the Mishnah of our Mishnah, which said the walls, uh, the thickness of the walls are sanctified. That's the lower supporting wall, which is equal to the ground. And again, that's if it opens up into the Azara, then it's going to have the sanctity. As even though it's a roof, because it's really the ground. Now, however, there is sanctity for the roofs in the Azara for something else, for the for the construction, for these two sticks that they had. One was for gold and silver, which was a half a finger red more, and that of, of construction, which was another half a finger red more. For that, it had sanctity, but for all the other things of the Mizbech, like eating or shechting, that Rav stands corrected. That that he stands correct. That he that it was not uh, did not have a sanctity of that of Yerushalayim. Of the Azar. We went to the next Mishnah. We said that two Chaburis could eat in one house because the Pesel could be Nachal Bashte Chaburis, even in two different houses, and therefore, even if they turn the face away. The Shamsh, however, he's one person, so he has to close his mouth when he's serving because one person cannot eat in two different places. We don't want to suspect him that as if he's going to eat in the other Chabur when he's serving them. And the Kala, she could also turn their face again, like the Gemara explains, because she's embarrassed and it's okay because they could be eating Bashte Chaburis. We said the Mishnah is like that of Rabbi Huda. Who holds the Yesh Imlam is serious, the primary is how that we read it without the Nikudis, how it's written. And if you would read it, the Baisach, you wouldn't read it Ye Ochel, you would read it Yechal, which is one person has to eat in one house, not in two houses. But a Pesach, from the upper Pesach, could eat it in two different houses, but according to Shimon, it's Yesh Imlam, the primary is how it's read, so it's actually the opposite. The Baisach is Ye Ochel, Karm Pesach can only be eaten in one house, which it cannot be in Mishnah Gabur. But one person could go ahead and eat in two different places. We said two nafkeminus between the machlekes if they were sitting and they made a machitza between them according to Yehuda, has to eat between the machabur according to Reb Shimon you cannot, or the other way around. Let's say they're sitting and they remove the wall from between them. According to Reb Shimon you could eat in two different places, whereas according to Yehuda you cannot, and it's like two different places. Which the Gemara says, okay, it's not necessarily so question. You should ask it as a question. Some interesting teachings we had at the end of the job was called Ma'ishem of Ma'ishem of Chabal Ma'isa say Chutz Mitzay whatever the the host tells you to do you do except for leave. Amos Amal Gadol is the concept that you can't refuse an offer of a great person. Also, that the person should be drinking his cup in two gulps, which that's their Eretz. And the halachas of the in general regarding proper etiquette when you're eating together with a few chavra, what is the proper custom? Thank you for any time for hosting us.